Hey guys, my name is Kyle McDonald with Competitive Will Performance Consulting. I am one of your elements of player development, uh, taking into consideration ideas of sports psychology and mental skills training. Uh, I have been running Competitive Will Performance Consulting since 2013. Uh, before that, I coached uh, at Athol Murray College of Notre Dame and at Iowa State in the ACHA. And before those two stints, I was in the CIS with the University of Lethbridge. Um, so I do have uh, a coaching and a technical background in hockey. Um, and then just so happened after my two years down in the States, I decided to uh, use my education, so to speak, and start competitive well. I hold a master's in sports psychology, and then I'm currently uh, on the 10 year process of, uh, of finishing my PhD, uh, revolving building the resilient athlete and positive youth development. So, um, currently, right now, through competitive will, I work with 40 individual athletes in a variety of sports and nine organizations. I would still say the majority of my business is in hockey, probably 50 to 60 percent, followed by another 20 to 30 percent in curling, and then, like I said before, a, a wide variety of sports after that, anywhere from saddle bronc to kettlebell to equestrian. Uh, I've worked with, been fortunate to work with a lot of athletes and. Uh, anywhere from 13 years old to professional athletes, amateur, provincial, national, Paralympians. Um, been very fortunate to, to see a lot of performance and ideas of high performance up close and personal. So um, that's kind of what I'm hoping to portray to you. Uh, I think one of the, the tough parts about sports psychology is that it's such an intangible. When I say it's intangible, I, I mean it's hard to put a measurement on it. Uh, you know, if you easiest example if you're looking to lose 10 pounds you know you might do some you'll weigh in in one week and then in a couple weeks you'll weigh in again uh, you'll maybe hire a nutritionist a strength and conditioning coach uh, you'll get some numbers and then hopefully those numbers start to improve and then all of a sudden you're saying hey you know what i am on the right track here sports psychology mental skills training is different because it's a, it's a human element it's it's how we feel about things it's how we feel about adversity it's how we feel about our motivation our attitude um, our preparation it's all those types of things so uh, that's kind of where I come in uh, in all honesty it's just a pillar of player development you look at technical and tactical stuff so you're on ice stuff you look at off ice stuff nutrition conditioning um, sleep and then all of a sudden you get into the mental side uh, it's funny when I go to a lot of uh, uh, seminars or, or if I if I do a group presentation I always ask the question about how important is the mental game and not a word of a lie a hundred hands go up out of a hundred people and then the next question comes along and says well how many would spend even two hours a month on their mental skills development and then all the hands start going down and the reason why that is is because it's 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 hard to find a way it's hard to find a way to develop the skill and I say a skill because that's what it is uh, the way we think about adversity the way we uh, deal with adversity and manage stressors in our in our sporting life and outside of our sporting life uh, is a skill and like everything you know there's there's a foundation of personality that plays a part in it but um, you know some people deal with stress very well uh, at an early age and then have troubles being when they're an adult and vice versa and, and so it's like I said starting to develop that human element and, and what we think about sport and what we want out of sport uh, so to speak so um, the easiest thing that I'll leave you with is, is, is this, is that when we talk about mental skills training, there's three levels. There's your basic skills, and on those basic skills are things like people skills. Uh, and why I say people skills is because in hockey as a team sport, you have to be able to go talk to your coach. You have to be able to talk to your teammates. Um, so that's important. Another basic skill is attitude, uh, and then motivation, and then your goals and commitment. On the next level from there is your preparation skills. This includes uh, things like if you're a low adrenaline versus a high adrenaline athlete, uh, do you need psyching up or do you need to bring yourself down? Um, some of those other things include visualization and self-talk and, and breathing and meditation, and those are all preparation things. And the last level is your performance skills. And then your performance skills is your managing emotions, managing anxiety, and at the very, very top is your focus and concentration. We've all heard the, the coaches and the players that say, you know what, I, we just lost focus or we didn't focus for 60 minutes. And that's why, and the reason why they say that is because focus and concentration is the hardest mental attribute to attain for a certain level of time. 
uh, think of when you're in school and you're in math class. Um, I would be hard pressed to find someone who is 100% focused for that full 60 minute math class. With that said though, those skills like visualization, self-talk and those things can bring you back into the area of focus and concentration, which helps you manage the anxiety and the emotions and stuff like that. So those are the kind of the three pillars that I work with among other things. And I sure do look forward to touching base with you guys and, and starting to develop this, this human component of your uh, development and of your performance. Thanks and I look forward to talking to you.